Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and do you remember as a child playing in backyard streams? I know I certainly do, and Amanda Gumbert is here today. She is with the University of Kentucky Extension Water Quality Specialist there, and I appreciate you being here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. And bringing a little bit of awareness and talking about planting and backyard streams and how important they are to the overall water quality. Okay, well, so we've talked this week a little bit about water quality on the farm. Mm -hmm. We've talked a little bit about water quality kind of in the big picture of the whole United States. Um, and now we're gonna really speak locally to folks who have streams um, either right in their backyards or maybe adjacent to their house or somewhere close to where they work or play, even on the farm, mm -hmm. beside the house, maybe on the farm. Um, and so it's just really important to remember that those little streams drain into big streams. So I too played in the creek a lot <laughs> as a kid and I think it's really important. You've got kids and I've got a little guy and I'm really, I think it's important for him to be able to do that too. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we can do to protect our backyard streams is we can plant things beside it. So um, I was taught that we should like mow to the edge of the stream, mm -hmm. you know, cause my mama was a little scared of snakes and critters that might live there. And so she didn't really want us to have that there. And so, um, what we're talking about is that area that's really just adjacent to the stream channel. Um, and we might call that a riparian zone mm -hmm. or stream side buffer. Um, and we can do things like put trees there. So those big roots of the tree will hold soil in place so we don't have erosion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we mow right to the edge of the stream bank, we get these really fairly steep stream banks. So if you, have, if you get to the edge of your creek and you have to like jump down into it, that's not really a good thing. Um, and so if we plant trees and shrubs, we can hold soil in place and then also provide shading to the stream itself. Um, so probably when you were in the creek, I bet you turned over rocks a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what kind of stuff? Do you remember stuff that you found Just in the creek? little slimy crawly things. Yeah, like little creatures <laughs> and maybe even like crawdads and uh -huh. stuff. We were all, I mean, that was a big find, right, to find a crawdad. Um, and so those little critters, um, they, they live under the rocks. So stone flies, may flies, all that stuff. And they need cooler water temperatures. And so if we provide shading with trees, um, then that cools that water down a little bit. The other thing we can do is we can plant pretty things. And so sometimes when we talk about putting, um, you know, areas along streams and maybe not mowing, people get a little scared. They think yeah. this is gonna be wild and woolly and this is just not gonna look good. Um, but we can make it look intentional. And so we kind of think about balancing a little bit of wild and woolly nature with intentional plantings. And so native plants that flower. Mm -hmm. um, so milkweeds, we hear a lot about milkweed yeah. right now as a really good source of uh, food for monarchs. Yeah. And I have to brag for a minute, I have some milkweed at home. I'm pretty excited. I saw a monarch on it Did the other day. You? Yeah. So Well, last week was uh, National Pollinator Week, so we talked a lot about, you know, planting those things that are good. Yeah, absolutely. And so we can, we can combine these efforts. We don't just have to have those close to the house. Mm -hmm. They can be along streams because then we have a water source for some of those either birds or insects that um, we think of as pollinator species. Um, and we also can have things that are pretty um, and that that give us some joy from looking out the landscape mm -hmm. and so um, you know we have a publication that kind of talks people through what things to plant by stream um, some things maybe like lobelia which is like kind of a spiky flower mm -hmm. that, that's blue usually um, we have cardinal flower which is also spiky but red um, things like milkweeds and um, black-eyed Susan even um, might be a good um, plant to put not quite at the edge of the water, but a little farther away, kind of at the edge of the stream bank. And those right are pretty low of, maintenance. They're really low maintenance. Mm -hmm. So, and all of those things are perennials and they're native perennials, meaning you can plant them once and then they're gonna come back on their own. And a lot of times the best way to maintain them is not Let to them touch go. them. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's always a nice thing when you're busy, you've got a lot going on, 
you know, the less mowing, sometimes the better. And, you know, a garden group or even a 4-H group could take this on maybe as a project. And, Absolutely. And have this planting and, and what rewards that you would get, you know, years later to be able to see the work that you've done and know that, you know, you're doing your small part. Right. To be able to, you know, keep those streams yeah. active and high water quality. So yep. thanks for being here with us today. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local Extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.